While Nazi ideology depicted German mothers as national heroes, single women and working women were often treated as second-class citizens. But as the Second World War progressed, the Nazis started allowing women to join the German army in order to deploy more men to the front lines. For many women, the lure of a stable, well-paid job and upward mobility was enough to heed the Nazi party's call. One of these women, SS officer Maria Mandel, went above the call of duty and rose to the highest position a woman could hold. Described as beautiful yet ruthless, Maria Mandel wielded art as a method of torture and earned herself the nickname, The Beast. The daughter of a shoemaker and stay-at-home mother, Maria Mandel grew up in a small town in Austria. As was common in the early 20th century, women had few opportunities to advance or enjoy a career. Marriage and family were priorities. When the Nazi party took power, it became even harder for women to get jobs, and the only work that could be found was largely unskilled and with very low pay. For a classical music lover like Maria, a sophisticated, empowered life could only be found outside of her hometown. In the early 1930s, Mandel traveled to Switzerland and worked as a chef. Just 15 months later, she returned to her hometown and moved back in with her family a decision likely out of her control given her status as an unmarried woman. In 1937, at age 25, Mandel finally found work again as a postmistress, but only five months in, she was abruptly fired. Left with little, Mandel moved to her uncle's in Munich and worked as a live-in housekeeper. It was there, either from her uncle's insistence or from a newspaper advertisement, that Mandel learned about the hiring of female concentration camp workers. In 1938, persuaded by the Nazis' promotion of the camp work as a high-paying, physically effortless, advantageous career career for women, Maria Mandel joined the Nazi ranks. Mandel's first assignment was at Lichtenberg, one of the earliest concentration camps and the first used exclusively for female prisoners. Undergoing a strenuous application process and working alongside 50 other women, Mandel was singled out for her superlatively inhumane treatment of prisoners. Holocaust survivor Lena Hogg recalled how Mandel stripped them naked tied them to a wooden post, and then beat them mercilessly. Professor Brown argued that the ability to gain control often served as the chief motivator for this level of brutality. Mandel saw her violent methods rewarded, which only increased her wicked treatment of prisoners. She was selected to open another women-only camp, Ravensbrück, where she quickly rose in ranks from Aufseherin, an overseer, to Oberaufseherin, or senior overseer. With this promotion, Mandel was now meant to delegate tasks. However, she preferred to still be hands-on. She battered pregnant women in the stomach to ensure the deaths of their unborn children, threw newborns to rats to be eaten, and burned infants alive. One prisoner mentioned that Mandel dressed a child in fine clothing, parading it around like a puppet. This little child was always by Mandel's side, holding her hand, but as was the case with all of Mandel's victims, Mandel grew bored with the child and threw them into the gas chamber. Mandel combined her horrible acts with her passion for music, a pas de deux of her deepest desires. Right after Mandel murdered a prisoner at roll call, she was seen playing the piano, lost in a world of her own, in ecstasy. Mandel's acts of violence earned her the nickname, The Beast. And her beastly acts continued to move her up the ranks until she eventually was moved to Poland and became SS Lagerführerin, or camp leader, at Auschwitz. This was the highest position a woman could hold at the largest concentration camp. As SS Lagerführerin, the Beast created her magnum opus, the Women's Orchestra of Auschwitz. The orchestra consisted of prisoners who would play for the commanders, for the arrival of new prisoners, for hangings, and for prisoners' processions to the gas chambers. The gorgeous melodies became an ominous signal of terror. At the height of her reign, the tides of war shifted in favor of the Allies. In 1945, the Allied invasion of Germany provided a coda to Mandel's brutal career. No longer in control, she attempted to flee to Bavaria, but was instead captured by American troops and sent to Krakow, Poland to stand trial. In 1947, Mandel's trial commenced. She was declared a war criminal and sentenced to death by hanging. Shockingly, in trial transcripts, Mandel stated that she had only acted in violence to restore order when the prisoners would not listen to her, and even this was only done by a hit with her hand. In reality, an estimated 500,000 death orders can be attributed to Maria Mandel. The studies of Jonathan Homola indicate that an overwhelming number of perpetrators were collectively performing under cognitive dissonance, and many Germans claimed absolute ignorance of the genocide. Maria Mandel was no exception. She experienced no remorse. The Beast was hanged on January 24, 1948. Her final words, perhaps a last-ditch attempt at ingratiation, long live Poland. <laughs>